Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to another episode of The Gloving Paradigm. I am your host Peter aka LPD8 Dubuque and today is going to be a very interesting day and a very interesting episode for everyone because as you can see by the title I'm talking about one of the most controversial subjects in the gloving community and that is the stigma of gloving. So what is the stigma of gloving? Well if you haven't been around for the early years of gloving like I was back in 2010 there was a lot of scrutiny that happened that really brought some negative light onto the gloving community, not by its own demise and by its own device really, but just how the public eye saw it when it really got pushed into the limelight for them. So let's we'll start with the beginning of gloving, which it's a very murky history, but the earliest known video posted on YouTube was in April 2006. And where this video was recorded was at a rave in Southern California. So if anyone knows anything about raves, there's one ever present element that will forever and ever plague the rave scene and that is drug use. And unfortunately, that's the same place that gloving started was in the rave scene. About 2008 is probably where most people would say gloving really started taking off as a phenomenon and then it just kept going from there. But let's give you some t context of what actually happened to actually bring gloving up to its point. Well, 2008, it really started taking off and it started expanding into other states from Southern California. Uh, I would probably say Arizona and Utah and Colorado were the ones that really started picking it up and then it shortly really poked its way over to the East Coast. I would probably say the East Coast was probably one of the very few spots that actually really started taking off, except for maybe New York. With that being said, uh, it really started taking off in the rave scene and it wasn't until about 2010 is when there was a very very dark mark onto Gloving's history. So in 2010 in Los Angeles, California there was a lovely event being hosted by Somniac events called the Electric Daisy Carnival as most of you probably know it as EDC. Well this is one of those televised things that happen and it swept through the news media like wildfire. So there was multiple incidents that happened at this festival, namely one of a death of a 15 year old girl named Sasha Rodriguez and this brought a lot of public scrutiny onto the entire EDMC as a whole and not just Insomniac. So what this caused, it really actually pushed event organizers to actually put out a new policy banning anything that can be construed as drug paraphernalia and that included LED gloves. So you know 2010 was the mark of the gloving ban as it was known from everybody. And anyone who's looked into gloving within probably three weeks, you probably have already been talked to about the whole gloving ban and how it's terrible and it's dumb and frivolous. And I can go on and on about this whole giant debacle about the gloving ban, but that wouldn't get us anywhere talking about it in that sense. So what did the gloving ban actually do to gloving? Well, it actually gave it its opportunity to really push itself out there and become its very own entity. So by the next year, the CEO of Amazing Lights hosted the very first International Gloving Championship. And this really showcased gloving being a, an eSport. Now, <laughs> it was very interesting that a lot of people really kind of fought hard about the whole competition, you know, the whole idea of superiority and things like that. But I just feel like bringing gloving into a competition format really allowed it to you know experiment and try new things and really push itself out there into a whole new element and bringing it also to a wider audience and as much as people want to say that the gloving ban is the reason why there is a stigma i honestly will disagree with you and say that the gloving ban is actually what really helped push gloving away from the stigma in a sense now grand most people are going to tell you well the gloving ban is there because of the stigma but you know if <laughs> that's the case then you know there shouldn't be any more talk about it right but fortunately no there isn't i know with i know with amazing lights they've really been talking to insomniac and really trying to push so you know gloving can come back to the festivals and things of that nature you know with like ideas like flow gardens or glove gardens or you know whatever name they decided to choose something garden is really <laughs> pretty much the the idea that they're going with which is a designated area where people can actually sit down and actually perform and things like that in a safe environment which I totally think is a really great solution to the whole the whole thing but you know it's kind of one of the things that it's like the damage has already been done and it's gonna be really hard to actually break from that so that's not the only thing that actually happened you know there's there's now festivals that actually be are being held that actually 
really encourage people to glove. You know, there's the art of gloving, which is like a very semi biannual or bi monthly basis where, you know, they just host a nice little place where people can go and glove. You know, there's all the competitions that are pretty much being held nationwide. And then there's all these online competitions that you can actually join and do it that way. You know, so if it wasn't for the gloving ban, we wouldn't have all the things that we have now. We wouldn't have the online competitions as much as we do now. We wouldn't have, you know, the boss tournaments and you wouldn't have ITC. You know, it, we've been pushed to a point where we actually have created something completely new and something completely devoid of, you know, the rave scene altogether. Now, granted, yes, EDM is mostly played at these tournaments. And yes, as many glovers will probably tell you, <laughs> you, you know, you can glove to anything. I will certainly even admit I glove to, you know, indie rock music when I'm by myself. And it's just one of the things that I can just connect to. You know, I've seen people glove to metal. I've seen people glove to country, oddly enough. <laughs> you know, I've seen I've seen many different things. It's one of those things that you kind of just have to take into account that, yeah, this, while this is a dark mark on gloving, it actually provided more benefit than damage, in my opinion. And I hope you guys actually see where I'm coming from. So, you know, yeah, we want to go to wherever we want to go to. The glove but unfortunately with how society's surface level thinking and face value nonsense thought it's not really going to happen i'll tell you from my own experience i never really went to a major festival that i try sneaking in my gloves and that's what most people do now is sneaking in their gloves which i will just interject here right now and say please don't do that i don't find it very worth it if you actually have the disposable income to actually lose you know, hundreds upon hundreds of dollars on these chips, then by all means, go ahead. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can only say so much, and, you know, it'll probably never phase most of you going to sneak them in regardless of what anyone tells you, and I totally understand that. But I honestly think if you're somebody who's like me who just doesn't have the, the money and the resources to just kind of spill away and just, you know, oh, well, I got my gloves taken away, mom, so I'll just go buy another set. First of all, I'm too emotionally attached and sentimentally attached to my gloves to just risk losing them, period. So if there's a chance of losing them, I probably won't take the chance. And I just don't really see the necessity that, you know, with how security guards at events, from at least from what I've been told, have been very aggressive and very, uh, <laughs> lack of a better phrase, brutal and belligerent and rather extortionary, which is kind of crazy. You know, I... <sighs> I just don't really see the risk that, you know, putting yourself into. Really don't like the whole idea that somebody's just trying to enjoy a hobby that they've been doing or just being passionate about something they enjoy. Just to have somebody, you know, bring them to the ground and then take what they worked so hard to have and then try to squeeze money out of them just to get back what they want. I find that kind of ridiculous. And now I haven't heard any official statements from any event organizers about this kind of phenomenon that's been happening and I don't really think it's necessarily their job to talk to their security the security guards because if I recall correctly it's usually outsourced to a third party security company so if it's if it's that kind of situation going to the event organizer all they're going to probably be able to provide for you is the company that they use for their security and that's pretty much who you want to be targeting in terms of human resources and things like that because you know event organizers are just running out of place and putting on the music and booking the djs and all that nonsense you know i don't think they're going to spend their own resources trying to have their own security team while you know there's companies who specialize in doing that so <laughs> do i really think you should be sneaking in your gloves no i really don't but if you're going to do it then you know you're doing it at your own risk and i do i do empathize with you when you get them taken away but, you know, at the same time, you knew what you're doing and you need the risk. It's like smoking cigarettes. You know, you're, you're telling somebody that, you know, smoking cigarettes is bad. They kind of already knew that and they see the lovely little Surgeon General's warning on the, on the box. Okay, because I used to be a smoker. I just recently quit myself. And, you know, that's what I tell people. Yeah, I know. I see this little, this little disclaimer from the Surgeon General of California. You know, I got it. It's cool. You know, that, and it's the same thing when it comes to drugs. I'm not going to sit here and advocate that you don't do them because 
people are going to do them whether or not somebody's telling them if they have the intention of doing them they're going to do them anyways it's just like trying to prevent people from doing drugs at raves anyways you know people are going to do them regardless of the activity or location that they're in if that's their intention of spending their their night or their their weekend is to be on a substance they're going to do it they're going to find a way to do it you know i've had friends who were planning on going to raise and they didn't go to the raise but you know they weren't really bummed about that they were wanting they were just like well i just want to go get eye on ecstasy or whatever the case may be you know and they spent you know three hours trying to find it found it got it ingested it and had a good night you know that was that's what they did you know i'm not going to sit here and try to tell you how bad it is but if you're intending on doing any substances just for the sake of harm reduction please educate yourself i can't stand the whole idea when i ask somebody hey what does this substance do to you instead of edgy hearing like a scientific effect diagram thing i just hear oh it just gets me messed up and it's uh, I cannot understand why people would be so ignorant about the things that they put in their body. You know, so, in summation, you know, the gloving ban actually did more good than bad. Drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> so, if you're going to do, you know, if you're not going to listen to anyone's advice, at least educate yourself on it. And if you're going to sneak your gloves into festivals, you're doing that at your own risk. Please just at least take my advice. And actually do yourself the favor of educating yourself before you do anything serious or really assess the risks that you're taking and ask yourself is it really worth it for you to actually take those risks but that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about when it comes to this this subject and I really hope that we don't have to circle back to this subject ever again <laughs> because it's just talking about this isn't really helping anything in terms of the gloving community it is just <sighs> Uh, it's like the best way I can describe it. It's like talking about in Magic: The Gathering the reserve list. People want it abolished. People want to keep it. People want to revise it. It's just, it's just a hot mess of politics, in my opinion, and doesn't really serve any purpose of helping anyone at all, except for possibly educating people on on law. And that's pretty much it is. And it's the same case with our stigma. It's just educating people on law, and. You know, it's not really helping people get better at the at the art or making it easier for us to get into festivals. You know, so I just feel like I don't want to spend too much time wasting on this entire subject matter. So I just wanted to get it out of the way, and I'm so glad I did. So if you make it to this far of this episode, thank you. You won the prize. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I have actually sat here, thought long and hard to actually bring up arguments to this. You know, I even had the idea of using the ni you know the 1920s prohibition as a way of you know you're telling people that they can't do it, they're going to find a way. You know, and that's exactly what people did. They started sneaking in their gloves to do so. And you know, as much as I just, I really just don't think it's a good idea to do it. But if, if you want to take the risk, you go ahead. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. So thank you for listening so much to this episode. If you guys have any questions or any comments that you guys would love to tell me, you guys can find my Facebook page at The Glove and Paradigm. I also have a Discord server, which I'm hoping all of you guys have been getting on there to uh, sign up. And it's also called The Gloving Paradigm. And you can actually shoot me an email at muttonchopguy at gmail.com. You can actually... <laughs> Just be sure the title that is, you know, the in the subject line that is regarding the podcast, so that way I know what it is. Other than that, I hope to hear you guys all next week. Next week's episode is actually just going to be an overall review of, like, the materials you should be looking for and actually possibly just investing into, into the whole art of gloving. And that's pretty much where next week's episode is going to be about. It's just really trying to get people started when they're just starting. I feel like... If I help a lot of new people who are just starting out, who haven't even gotten their first glove set, I kind of want to just get that out of the way to be like, all right, here's the material you should be looking for. And this is some of the ideas that as somebody like me who wish had somebody to tell them like starting out, that would have been fantastic. So thank you all for joining me on this episode of The Gloving Paradigm. I am your host, Peter, aka LPD8 Dubuque, and I'll see you all next week.